Well, hello there, space monkeys. Welcome to Political Fight Club. I'm Robert Durden, and in this episode, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna laugh to keep from crying. There are some horrifying things going on in America right now, which we are going to laugh at quite a bit. I'm gonna make a couple of jokes. Uh, the censorship apocalypse continues, and apparently now we have a Ministry of Truth, which has been developed under the Democrats, who apparently are not as fascist as the Republicans. You know, the boutique left and the Democrats have been claiming that they are the, in fact, humane ones who are in favor of democracy. But uh, as it turns out, I was right. For the last 18 months, I've been saying that the Democrats are just the sneakier of the two fascist parties in this country, and they in fact get away with a lot more that the, than the Republicans do because they have a better PR team. They tend to pretend that they're more humane and they care about democracy more than the Republicans do, whereas the Republicans kind of wear their fascism out on, this, on their sleeves. So I don't know about you guys, but I like my fascism out where I can see it. At least the Republicans are obvious about it. You know, the Democrats really want the same things that Mitch McConnell and Mike Pompeo and Marco Rubio and Donald Trump all want. They just have a better PR team and are better at hiding it. So in a lot of ways, they get things done when it comes to surveillance, when it comes to censorship, that the Republicans can't get done. And in fact, Bill Clinton has gotten a lot more done that was harmful to this country that George Bush never would have been able to get done simply because he was running as a Republican and he was in the Republican Party. So you guys decide. Do you want your fascism hidden, cloaked, thinly veiled with platitudes that you actually care about humanity? Or do you like your fascism out in the open where you can see it? You guys decide. I prefer that second one. So the Democrats are in fact getting something done that the Republicans never would get done, which is they've created a ministry of truth. So we'll get to that second. Biden had his most fascist day ever yesterday, a day that if Donald Trump had a day like Joe Biden had yesterday with the amount of money he sent to Ukrainian Nazis, with the censorship going on with um, a bunch of journalists that are high profile were taken off of PayPal so they can no longer get funding yesterday and with the creation of a ministry of truth if Donald Trump had done that in one single day the neolibs would be losing their fucking minds calling him Hitler and they'd be right to but they've been calling Trump Hitler but Biden's the one that had the most Hitler like day of all time yesterday so we'll talk about that second I want to digress for a moment and talk a little bit about something I was talking about about six weeks ago when Joe Rogan was in the news now, Joe Rogan, he was smeared relentlessly, really tried to get canceled by the neoliberal shit zippers of this country because he was having doctors on his show to talk about COVID accurately, by the way. Those are doctors that are not giving disinformation. So naturally, he was smeared by a whole bunch of people and a whole bunch of neoliberal celebrities decided to try to cancel him and protest him being on Spotify by they themselves getting off of Spotify, which was like Neil Young, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, Barbara Streisand. And what ended up happening is these people ended up participating in the Streisand effect, which the Streisand effect is when you try to cancel something, but it has the opposite effect. It backfires in a way because you try to cancel something. So a lot of people tend to go, oh, why is this person getting canceled by everybody? So it actually draws more of a spotlight onto the thing you're trying to cancel. So it backfires on you. That's why it's called the Streisand effect. Back in the day, Barbara Streisand didn't want pictures of her house, which is enormous, online. And she protested and was making a big stink about these pictures being online. And it ended up bringing a bunch more views to the pictures of her house. That's why it's named that. So what happened here is Neil Young, went out and said he was going to leave Spotify unless they canceled Joe Rogan, unless they kicked him off of Spotify. And so Neil Young did not actually leave Spotify. He brought more spotlight to the COVID discussion that was going on on Joe Rogan's show. And I want to show you guys something. I've, I've called it the Boomer Young effect. These woke neolib celebrities are so woke and so into cancel culture that they're now canceling themselves in protest of things that they don't like. <laughs> like, if, they, if there's something they want to cancel, they'll go, well, I'm going to cancel myself and get off of this platform unless, of course, they cancel Joe Rogan or whatever person we happen to be smearing today. So this is fucking hilarious. That's the Boomer Young effect. By the way, he didn't leave Spotify. All of his shit's still on there. It was all empty rhetoric. It was like all of those... <laughs> all of those Democratic celebrities that are like, if, if Donald Trump gets reelected, I'm moving to Canada. How many of you motherfuckers actually moved to Canada? 
So um, this is really funny. It's happening with the new acquisition of Twitter by Elon Musk. I don't know if you guys saw this, but Alyssa Milano is actually going to leave Twitter because Elon Musk bought it out. And I know that makes a lot of you guys sad because, I mean, whatever are we to do without her hilarious tweets? You know, what are we going to do when we really need a good laugh if Alyssa Milano isn't there to show a picture of her and her kids wearing masks for COVID that are crocheted by her? <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do without her. I don't know what we're going to do without her. Can you imagine? Maybe Rob Reiner want to follow her over to get her. Maybe Stephen King... George Takei, that way they can all go over there and all of their getter tweets can get like eight or nine likes a piece because they're all liking each other's stuff, maybe. All I have to say to Alyssa Milano is don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. Jesus Christ, no one gives a shit. And of course, this is again the Boomer Young effect. These people are so into cancel culture that they're willing to cancel their own accounts on social media in protest of something they don't like and everybody hates them so much that they don't give a shit. And what it ends up doing is causing the Streisand effect. And it brings more spotlight to the thing that they are in protest of, which for the most part are things that most normal people don't give a shit about. So it's, it's so funny. I love this. It makes me so happy to see these neoliberal shit zippers canceling themselves because Elon Musk bought Twitter. It's a, let's just call it a um, happy side effect of this recent acquisition. I don't know if I'm for or against Musk owning Twitter. It was already owned by billionaires before, now it's just owned by the richest man on earth, but he seems like rhetorically and outwardly a free speech absolutist. So we'll just have to see what he actually does. But it makes me laugh so hard, of course Alyssa Milano's like, I'm gonna go to Getter. I don't think you're gonna do too well on Getter, but you know, have at it, have at it. Maybe Stephen King and Rob Reiner and all these other fucking shit libs will join you over there on Getter. And we'll see how many of your followers follow you over there. Doesn't hurt us at all. We don't mind you guys leaving, quite frankly. So um, I'm going to read to you here. Something else happened with Joe Rogan. And this is something I kind of knew was going to happen. And I talked about it on my show before. A lot of times when these people that mostly everybody just disdains, when they come in large numbers to cancel you, these legions of Karens come to try to cancel you, it has a backfire effect. A lot of times it ends up bringing a lot more focus to what you're saying. And most normal people who don't, you know, drink the Blue Maga Kool-Aid, see what you have to say. A lot of them end up like subbing to you and they're like, oh, this person actually knows what they're talking about. And in fact, when they piss off people like Alyssa Milano and Neil Young, I actually like that take. It makes a lot of sense to me. So I'm going to sub to this person. So as it turns out, Joe Rogan, when he was getting canceled by all these shit libs, he went up like 2 million subscribers. 2 million subscribers. So I'm going to read to you really briefly here from the New York Post. I've always known that was going to happen. And that's why I try to piss off these people. Because a lot of times when they drag me, which they did after the General Strike Summit, for instance. I was talking about the Hunter Biden laptop and the fake uh, Trump Alpha Bank story. I got dragged up and down. You know what happened to my YouTube channel? I gained tons of subscribers. Because <laughs> the neolibs hated me. But... Most people are like, yeah, fuck the neolibs. I want to see what this Robert Durden fellow was talking about that's got them so pissed off. So I'm going to read you here real quickly from the New York Post. Joe Rogan on cancel culture attempt, quote, I gained 2 million subscribers. What doesn't cancel you only makes you stronger? I happen to agree with that. Attempts to cancel Joe Rogan have apparently only had the opposite effect. The Joe Rogan Experience host claims that he amassed millions of Spotify subscribers amidst ongoing uproar over past episodes in which he'd featured alleged anti-vaxxer guest and dropped the N-bomb. Rogan dropped the bombshell about his alleged influx of subscribers on Friday's episode with British pundit Douglas Murray. Quote, you have been put through the ringer since we last met, exclaimed Murray, referring to the Fear Factor host being in the social media skillet. They did a number on you. Wow. Rogan, who reportedly averages 11 million listeners per episode, responded, It's interesting. My subscriptions went up massively. That's what's crazy. During the height of it all, I gained 2 million subscribers. Which, I think the data just got released, and that actually has been confirmed. So, <laughs> there's been a weird change over the last, like, couple of months, where I think most people in America are just tired of shit-lib ideology. 
they're tired of this hoity-toity, holier-than-thou, oh, you can't say that or we're going to cancel you. Oh, you can't say that word or we're going to cancel you. You can't have that opinion or we're going to cancel you shit. We're done with it on both sides of the aisle. And it's starting to show up in instances like this, which is really interesting to me. And of course, I've always kind of suspected this, which is why I try to be sort of inflammatory against shit libs on this channel. That's why I do my neoliberal roasts. Yeah, am I going to piss off some shit libs? Sure. But then it, it brings them in in legions, smearing me, and it actually makes my channel grow. So this is a confirmation of sorts that sort of vindicates my whole model, which I kind of like. So congratulations, Rogan. Um, you know, consider doing something like I do. You know, call out a bunch of shit libs. Try to piss them off, because every time you piss them off, this legion of Karens is going to highlight your show, and everybody that hates that legion of Karens is going to be like, hey, what's this Rogan fella talking about that's got all of these Karens that everybody hates so up in arms? And then you end up putting on subs. So anyway... I digress. Let's talk about something that's a little more important. Joe Rogan, or excuse me, Joe Rogan, Joe Biden had his most fascist day of all time yesterday. He literally did three things that if any one of these things got done by Donald Trump, the entire neoliberal establishment would have been losing their minds, calling him a fascist, and they would be right. But because it's Biden, they act like none of this stuff happened. So the first thing is, is that Biden is now requesting $33 billion Billion with a B. $33 billion in Ukrainian aid, $20 billion of which is just weapons, just military aid to Ukraine, which, as we know, that's a bunch of Nazis. Not the entire army, but a large amount of the Ukrainian National Guard is the Azov Battalion and other Nazi battalions. So if Trump did that, holy shit, would you see these people lose their minds. For good reason. But Biden did it, so they don't really give a shit. The other thing that happened yesterday is they created a Ministry of Truth, which is called the Disinformation Governance Board, which I think they named it like that, so it's kind of hard to remember. Ministry of Truth really rings true. It really sticks with you. I think they came up with the most hard-to-remember name as possible on purpose, because then it seems a lot less Orwellian, but it's called the Disinformation Governance Board, and it is basically to tell you guys what's the truth, and what's not the truth. And now, if you don't believe it's the Ministry of Truth, I want to introduce you to the leader, the Minister of Truth, as it were. Her name is Nina Jankowitz, or as she was known in high school as Janky, Miss Janky. Actually, that's misinformation. I don't know that that was actually her high school name. Please don't have me canceled for saying that that was your nickname in high school, Janky. I don't know that for sure. But anyway, if you don't know anything about her, I didn't know much about her either, but there's a bunch of her old tweets going around. Let's just put it this way. When the Doma story about how Assad allegedly, allegedly um, gassed his own people back in Doma a couple of years ago, we talked about how Aaron Mate and the Grey Zone, they did a lot of great reporting on how, in fact, the OPCW whistleblowers... OPCW is a watchdog network that deals with chemical attacks, said that, in fact, Assad did not gas his own people. There's no evidence for that. And, in fact, the report that came out was highly doctored to push the narrative that Assad did gas his own people. And that, in fact, was used as a reason for us to go and bomb Assad. Trump bombed Assad or uh, Syria right afterwards, right? This woman, Nina Jankowitz, she was pro that bombing and was citing Bellingcat as her source as a reason to bomb Syria, and as a reason that this was, in fact, the, uh, this was truth. So that tells you exactly what we're getting into. She, in fact, is also a serial Russiagator. She has been wrong on numerous things, and in fact, she's gone so far as to call uh, websites like the Gray Zone scum. No joke. No joke. So she goes out and actively smears good journalists, and then will promote Bellingcat talking points. She'll promote anybody that she has to as long as it goes in line with the CIA narrative, as long as it helps maintain narrative control. So therefore, she is a perfect minister of truth, which is, of course, not true. It's just a ministry of lies, right? It's not really the ministry of truth. So um, it makes me sad that this janky woman is, in fact, the head of the ministry of truth, but it's not at all surprising. Uh, Again, Biden has allowed this to happen. If Trump did this, everybody would have their heads explode on the left, and rightly so. 
But Biden can get away with it in a way that the Republicans can't, can't he? And then the last thing that happened, guys, is uh, very sad news. And again, very scary. This is why I've been harping so hard for the second season of PFC. We must protect our journalists. A whole bunch of journalists who I have showcased on this channel recently had their PayPal accounts suspended yesterday. And I'll go specifically, we had Caleb Maupin, Manar Adley, um, Manar Muhawesh, now Manar Adley from Mint Press News. She's the editor over there and the creator of Mint Press News. And uh, Alan McLeod, who I showcased in my first episode of season two with some of his great work, they were all suspended from PayPal. So they're effectively in this country now suspending the funding apparatus for the best journalists in this country. This is very, very scary. Beyond that, the gray zone was recently um, smeared. NewsGuard, which is a very, very shady, obvious, not fact checker, but you know they go under the guise of a fact check website, has been talking about Gray Zone being a nefarious website. That, of course, is very scary as well. They went after Mint Press News recently as well. This is what I was trying to tell you guys on the General Strike Summit, and part of the reason why I suspect I was smeared so hard after I brought this up. The propaganda apparatus does not only force-feed people propaganda and prop up their own lies, they also will censor hardcore anybody who is poking holes in those lies. And it doesn't matter what they have to do. They'll smear you personally. They will try to get your website shut down. They will also, in fact, cut off your funding apparatus. So what do we do, guys? We will... Pay attention to all of the journalists that do, in fact, get censored in this country, which is now a lot. The Gray Zone, Alan McLeod, everybody at Mint Press News, Menar Adley, and Caleb Maupin. We need to fund these people. Whenever they come up with some sort of, um, you know, crowdfunding type of idea to help them keep doing their journalism, we need to figure out a way to do that. Now, Indiegogo dot com is a way for you to fund uh, Mint Press News right now. They just brought on Lee Camp. And that makes me very, very happy to see he's going to be doing a show that's very much like Redacted Tonight. Go there and start donating to them. We need to protect these people. And if they cut off the funding for our journalists, we need to fund them. Figure out any way we can. So I'm going to link some stuff below. I highly recommend you go and fund these newspapers. They've done great work. I've highlighted the Gray Zone and Mint Press News more than any other two outlets because they do good journalism, which is exactly why they're being censored and defunded right now. So... Joe Biden had his most fascist day of all time. In Joe Biden's America, with the Democrats controlling all of our government, the House, the Senate, and the executive branch, we now have a Ministry of Truth created. All of these really good journalists who are exposing the propaganda apparatus in this country and in Ukraine are getting defunded, deplatformed, taken down entirely. And of course, Joe Biden's sending enough money to basically solve homelessness in America twice to Ukrainian Nazis. And you guys are telling me that Trump was the fascist? That Trump was Hitler? I don't like Trump. He was a terrible president. But Trump would never be able to get away with what Biden did yesterday. Never. So we have to fight fascism by fighting the Democratic Party. We have to fight fascism by fighting the duopoly. And so it's very important that we go out there and protect our journalists. We need to fund Menar Adley. We need to fund Caleb Maupin, Alan McLeod, and anybody who goes down in the future. And uh, let's fund Mint Press News' new edition of Lee Camp with his new show. It's called, I, I think it's called the Most Censored News, actually, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, we need to fund these people so that the government can't get them, can't take them down. That's what political fight club is we need to protect our journalists and if we stick together these hundreds if not thousands of online content creators can protect all these journalists and we will in fact fight off fascism and fight off censorship in this country now i'd like to offer you guys just a little bit of hope just the fact that joe biden's administration has created a ministry of truth means that they realize that they are actually losing narrative control CNN Plus is dead. The Obama's podcast is dead. The Intercept is hemorrhaging subscriptions. A lot of these mainstream media outlets are dying. They're dying. 
because they don't tell the truth and young people in particular can see through their bullshit. They are not transitioning well online and the ones that are online are few and far between. So like I said, guys, indie media is winning. We're winning. This, the sheer fact that they're creating a ministry of truth so boldly and so obviously tells me that they understand what kind of precarious situation their propaganda apparatus is in. So we're winning. We need to keep our pedal to the metal, keep destroying these propagandists, poking holes in everything that they say and exposing them as liars, and we need to protect our journalists that are doing so. If we do that, this whole fight club that we've got set up right now will eventually snuff them out, and I'm hoping that we can destroy and possibly, you know, join forces across the aisle to destroy this ministry of truth. There's no way we can allow this to happen. This is some V for Vendetta shit, which, believe it or not, Megan McCain actually tweeted that earlier, and I retweeted Megan McCain for the first time in my entire life. She's like, this is some V for Vendetta shit, and I was like, you know what, I hate to fucking say it, but she's right. But that tells you something. There's something that the Republicans and the true proletariat left agree upon. Censorship is bad, and the fact that they're creating a ministry of truth is very alarming, so let's let bygones be bygones, unite, and destroy this. We can destroy this propaganda apparatus, we can cripple if not destroy this ministry of truth, we need to give them hell. All right. So, um, in synopsis here, you know, congrats to Joe Rogan for going up for pissing off the, uh, Legion of Karens. That actually makes me very happy and confirms my business model as I do this in my basement. Not really a business model, I don't make any money off of this. But it makes me happy to see that if you go out there and piss off a whole bunch of Karens, that it actually helps your channel, because that means that the future is bright for somebody like me. But um, the other stuff that's happening in this country, the overt censorship, is very bad news, but the silver lining is, guys, this censorship is getting worse because we've got the propaganda apparatus and the elites in a corner, and they're in their death throes, and they're lashing out. So... We need to just keep fighting, and, you know, God willing, if we stick together, we'll be able to defeat this. The last thing I'd like to uh, ask, I don't know if this will ever happen, but it would be nice for Elon Musk to prove that he really does care about free speech and freedom of press. Elon, you'll never see this, but if anybody else that watches this has a way of tweeting at him or getting his attention, you need to tweet about freeing Julian Assange. That would be huge if we could get Elon Musk to put his money where his mouth is, as it were, and tweet about freeing Julian Assange, who is absolutely a symbol for free speech and freedom of press across the world. That would be enormous if we can get that. And it would also prove to a lot of people that Elon actually cares about free speech and isn't just doing this as some sort of like, you know, some sort of stunt, you know. So that would be sweet. I implore you, please tweet hashtag free Assange. Just that alone will get you millions of likes and it will make the world a better place. It will give a lot of us a lot of ammunition to actually trying to get Julian free, which there's no reason why he should be locked up in the first place. Please do that. So the other thing I implore all of you out there to do is please join PFC. It doesn't matter what you want to do. You don't have to do a show like me. If you want to do a show like me, all it takes is an iPhone. Just aim it at you and bitch into a microphone every night. It doesn't cost any money only costs your time and a little bit of research, but it, there's other things you can do too. Even if it's just getting on Twitter and exposing propagandists, attacking propagandists, if you can curate content or even write music or do some intros for some of these shows, join us, please. The more of us that we have in this independent, decentralized media network, the better chance we have of taking down the mainstream media corporate propaganda apparatus. But we need all hands on deck, all hands on deck right now, guys. If we're all decentralized and we take care of each other and protect our journalists and attack propagandists, they can't take us all down. They can't take us all down. They can take a handful of us down at a time, but they can't take us all down. There's strength in numbers. I, I'm begging you, please join this PFC, this fight club. And together, we will snuff out this propaganda apparatus. But it might take us years. But I guarantee you, if you're watching this right now, you're better at doing the news and giving 
insightful, nuanced commentary than any of these boutique lefties or certainly these mainstream media pundits that are on television right now. So please help us. I implore you. That would be wonderful. And uh, we'll work together and we will have success in the future. So um, keep fighting that good fight out there, guys. Remember to go and protect your journalists and go to uh, donate to Alan McLeod, Kayla Maupin, Manar Adley, everybody at Mint Press News in the gray zone. Let's fund them and protect them in any way we can. I'll see you.